Hi, my name is Alex with A Tech Tech Tutorials. In my last video, I talked about the theory of bugs, and today I'm going to show you how to create and use bugs inside of Jira. There are a couple of quirks. There's a couple of things that you want to know, and I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks on how to maximize the value that you get in capturing your bugs. Not every bug is created equal, and if bugs are the bane of your existence, if bugs are your problem child, you're gonna wanna make sure you stick around for this video and watch the entire thing so that you can understand and hopefully appreciate by the end how you can tame your bugs. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover in this video, let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira. So a couple of just level setting things that I wanna cover. This is going to be dedicated for bugs, and I want to show you how at last, and out of the box, just as soon as you create a project, right? This is just a completely new project. I just follow the, the standard operating procedure for creating a new project. I want to show you what Atlassian is doing because it, it's a very subtle thing that they do, but Atlassian is already accommodating and accounting for the fact that bugs are ever so slightly different than like working on features. So let me show you a couple of things that's happening under the hood, behind the scenes, that you probably just didn't even know about. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna go into is into my project settings, and I'm gonna go into my workflows. When I go to my workflows, you'll notice that the bug is going to share the exact same workflow as the rest of the project. So this could be a good thing or this can be a bad thing. It really depends on you, but I just want you to be aware of that out of the box, all of your issue types are gonna have that same workflow. Typically though, a bug might, sometimes depending on your organization, it might follow a different trajectory. You might wanna do some investigation. You might wanna do uh, some reproducibility of the bug, right? And so you, having the standard dev workflow might not always be apropos for when you're working on like new features, for example. So if you're in that camp where you want basically your bugs or your defects to be separate from your features and stories, you want to make sure that you essentially go and create a new uh, workflow for just your bugs. Otherwise, they're all going to live together. So that's thing number one. Number two is at the screen level here, by default, out of the box, Jira is going to give you a default screen scheme for basically all your issue types except the bugs. The bugs are going to get their own. Now, the reason this is, the very easy answer to the, why this is, is because out of the box, Atlassian is going to give you an extra field. It's going to, sorry, it's, it's going to give you two extra fields. It's going to give you the environment field and it's going to give you an effects version. These two fields are not in the other issue types by default. You can add them in if you want to, but they're not there by default. But because these fields are going to be different, you're going to get two different items here. So that's kind of like that little just level setting how bugs are treated very differently in Jira. Now let's actually jump into and creating a bug so that I can kind of walk you through my typical scenario for how I triage and adjudicate bugs with the teams that I work with. So when you go and hit create and, and I select the bug, you'll notice that some of the fields change, right? So we're still going to have the standard summary, right? So my very first bug. And you can still fill out a component if you want to, and, but in the description, this is where you want to put some good information, okay? Over the last, I don't know, 12 years that I've been working in this industry and capturing bugs, this is kind of like a make or break for a lot of folks, right? And so you want to really hold your line when it comes to bugs because not everything is a problem. And there are people that like to cry, the sky is falling. It's a delicate balance. You want to create an interesting environment for, for how you treat, create, and handle bugs, okay? One, you want to make sure that everybody in the organization, if you see it, say something, right? So if somebody sees a problem, you should empower every individual in your organization to create a bug. You don't want bugs to go unnoticed because that is a surefire way to basically create a very, 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 very expensive headache, right? I've seen this happen in one of the companies that I worked for. It cost them $100 million to have a defect that made it all the way to production, right? And so you want to be very, very careful and you want to encourage everybody that if you see something wrong, report it. 
right? But with that said, it kind of opens up a little bit of Pandora's box because now you're going to have an influx of just bugs being created, but not every bug is an actual fire. And so you can't, you if if you do, you will essentially like just kill yourself in the project because you will have so many bugs that you're going to be just in firefighting mode all the time and you will have no time for, for actually developing features for your customers. But on the flip side, if you ship a crappy product <laughs> full of bugs, your customers aren't going to like it. And word of mouth is a very powerful thing. And so you essentially have this very delicate balance that you're trying to keep in check, keep balance, because if you have, if you have too many critical bugs that are not being fixed, your customers will let you know. If you have, if you don't have enough features and your customers aren't getting enjoyment out of the product, your customers are going to let you, let you know. So you have to play this really interesting balancing game of making sure your sprints and that your team is in a very healthy and organic way, essentially fighting two different fronts. So anyways, just want to let you know, because I've seen a lot of teams get captured in this and it all starts here with the components, the descriptions and the fixed versions and priorities. Right. And so the component, whenever you are, have a bug, you should identify which part of the system this bug belongs to. The components is a great way to capture that information because it allows you to basically decompose your entire system into different categories. I've seen it done in different capabilities. And now you can associate your bug to a different capability or a different part of the system so that you can then basically measure which system or which subsystem is more healthy than others. And then you can kind of attack and send engineering efforts into that system, right? But now you can categorize your bugs. The next thing is in the description. You want your description to be very clear. You want developers, when they're reading a bug that's assigned to them, you want them to be able to understand what the heck the bug is all about. You don't want there to be any ambiguity between the person that found the bug, maybe your QA tester, hopefully not your customer, and your developer, right? Because now you gotta remember that your developer is gonna spend precious time trying to reproduce it not mentioned here or not pictured here, I should say, is reproduction steps. So I will encourage if you don't have a dedicated field for like steps to reproduce, how to reproduce the bug, I encourage you to then stick them into your description so that at least somebody knows, but it is very, very critical that you have steps to reproduce because if your developer cannot reproduce this bug and they're just gonna go spend time trying to figure it out, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Your schedule and your budget, your cost, everything just goes out the wayside because things are just going to go catastrophically bad. And so you want to make sure that whoever finds these bugs, they put in steps to reproduce. And this is very critical because many bugs are sometimes a blip, right? Sometimes they're just like, a oh, I saw it once and I haven't seen it again. So it basically, whenever somebody sees a blip, it makes them have to go back and reproduce it themselves so that they can capture the steps so that you can then give them to your developer. But if they can't reproduce them, then sometimes they won't even create the bug, which could be a good thing, right? Because if, if you're getting just like these uh, an anomalies, then you don't really want to spend too much engineering efforts on an anomaly. So having your steps to reproduce are very, very key to making sure we have a great bug captured in Jira. The next thing is the fixed version. This is kind of more of like the between the PO, your product owner, and your scrum master. Y'all are trying to figure out when's a great time to get this shipped relative to the bigger picture, relative to all the things that we're working on today, and basically making sure that it will fit in the right timeline. So having a fixed version version is very critical to the overall bug success. The next thing is priorities. I highly recommend that you have an established criteria for what these different values mean because I like to, I come from a hardware background. So my highest priority is typically a, this thing's going to blow up if we don't do something about it. And so I reserve the highest priority. I also like to follow the IEEE, which is like um, critical and then major, then minor. I forget what they are, but there's like an IEEE standard of how they define priorities and not pictured here. There is another discussion that you should be having uh, internally. And that is, do you need severities? So we'll leave severities. There is a distinct difference between priorities and severities. The best way I've seen it is priorities are going to be from the business. What's the priority for this, right? And then severities is going to be how critical is it from an engineering perspective? So that blowing up 
is it going to blow up is would be a severity, right? Versus a priority is the business has needs this done. Otherwise, the business will fail. And so there are some two distinct, but out of the box, you don't have those two fields. So if all you have is priority, I would default to engineering. Maybe that's just because I'm a technical person. Uh, I'm sure that a, an executive will tell you, no, 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 it should be based on business needs, but just have that conversation internally. And if you guys can't figure it out, have those two fields, severities and priorities, and things should, life should be a lot easier. And then the last thing that I want to make sure that you uncover here are two little things here. The environment, uh, this is, for example, the operating system, the software platform, right? The This is really key. This is very, very important. A lot of teams miss this, right? But what were the conditions in which that bug was created? What version of stuff, which we'll cover in effects version, right? But what what time of day? Because some bugs tend to uh, surface towards the end of the day. And guess what? Systems have memories. And when there's a memory leak and you have a bigger underlying architecture problem, you start getting a lot of problems after the system's been running for three, four, five, six, eight, ten hours, right? And all of a sudden, all these bugs are happening because now you're running, your software's running into these like really, really edge case scenarios where you're out, basically out of resources, computing resources. So you want to capture these environments. You want to know what was happening, what was going on, where were you when you're in the lab, was it on the developer machine? What was the situation? What was the environment for when this bug happened? So that again, when you're going to reproduce, you can basically go into that same environment and recreate it. And then the last thing we'll talk about is the effects version. So this is really, really critical. You want to know where the bug was found, which version of the software, right? Because if you don't know, then it's again, your developer is going to go away countless, waste countless time trying to figure out where, who, what, when, where, why. And we can basically utilize the ticket here to capture the who, what, when, where, why. And so the effects version is going to play a crit critical role. It's different than the fix because the fix is going to tell you when it's actually going to get fixed. The effects is which version of the software was this thing found in. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it wasn't found in a in the wild in production version because that's usually the most expensive fix for you to do, the most critical, and usually the one where you just drop everything and go fix that problem. But um, anyways, use this uh, version because if you're working on two, three versions, you're maintaining a couple of versions, it's going to be very important for you to determine which version that was used in. So anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found any value, drop a like. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what I covered in this video, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.